extremely high energy prices tend to be a headwind for the economy. The reason is, is consumers go to the pump and they're paying more money than they have before. One of two things typically tends to happen. They either travel less, so they're spending less money on gasoline, or if they have to travel the same amount, they tend to spend less money other places because a higher percentage of their expendable money is being spent on energy. And so it, in effect, can kind of suck additional money out of the economy. And in this video, I want to pay very close attention to what's going on with the price of oil and gas. We're at an important level, and I also want to take a look at the energy companies as well. They've had a very strong run so far this year, but that might be changing. So let's jump right into it. Now, <clears throat> what we have up on the screen is a three-year chart of oil. You can see the big spike from the Ukraine uh, crisis here at the beginning of the year. It topped out on a closing basis right here. And you can see this move that we had higher into June has failed right there at that 122 mark, which was that closing high from the Ukraine crisis. This area on the chart is now resistance, like 122, 123, all the way up to 130. All right. For the bull market to continue here, we need to break above and make a higher high. Now, we still have a series of higher lows that is in place, but today's price action is actually challenging this little low that we had here in May. If we break underneath of it, we actually have a couple of lower highs and potentially some lower lows. Now, the main level on this chart is right around this 93 zone. That is these lows here. If you break below that area, right, we fall out of this range of support. Here's our resistance. This is our trading range in here. We break underneath of that. That would be a topping pattern. So 93 is going to be that key level, but the price action that we've seen here over the last week or so has been extremely weak. And that's now let's take a look in at gasoline. Gasoline, very similar chart. Now, gasoline actually made higher highs from the Ukraine spike, right? Here's the Ukraine spike, and it continued to grind higher. Um, and so we actually did just make a higher high a couple of weeks ago. And you can see on this chart, clearly we have a major level of support right here at 350, right? Resistance, resistance breaks through and then acts as support, acts as support. And the question mark here is, is this going to act as support? We break underneath of this zone. The next area of support's right at that major $3 level. That's what we'll be paying attention to. But this right here is a very, very important level, a move underneath could give us a, a respite at the pump, but that's not going to be great for oil and gas companies. And typically, when we look at a bear market, a bear market tends to hit all sectors. The one area of this market that really has been unscathed for the majority of this year has been the oil and gas sector. So if we take a look at uh, XLE, the uh, energy ETF, up 68% at the highest point for the year. And since that, a couple of weeks ago, it has given back roughly about 20% from those highs. So if you're using that, you know, media 20% is a bear market, you actually just flipped from the bull market into a bear market. Now, I don't personally believe that 20% makes a, a bear market. What's more important is are we making lower lows and lower highs? And right now, we are at a major level in the energy space. We had that strong sell-off on Friday, and it fell right to that 72 and a half zone. That's where we saw the bounce in April. That's where we saw the bounce in March. And that's where we had the breakout from there in February. This held, and we got a really strong bounce yesterday. Oil and gas are once again weak overnight. And this looks like we we're going to open right around this zone here. So we're going to give back yesterday's move. What happens at the 72 to 70 zone is super important here for the energy space. A break underneath could really make this look like a false breakout. We talk about this a lot. False breakouts are usually met with swift pressure in the opposite direction. So we had that breakout, we grind higher, and then a really sharp move underneath. When it cuts below the level of support, that is when this is confirmed to be that false breakout. If the energy space can hold over that 70 zone right here, while well, this price action isn't great, it's holding on to support, and then we watch what happens on the way back up on a bounce. So as you can see, both oil and gasoline, as well as the energy companies as a whole, are trading right there at a key level. 
the overall market in a bear market and a bear market typically historically leaves no area of the market unturned we're really watching this energy space because it has had such a strong year a break underneath and starting to have lower would be kind of the last area of leadership in the market getting hit and that would probably bode poorly for the rest of the market so really really important to pay attention to what goes on in the energy space right here I hope you guys found this content useful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at mtedeski at perspectivehealthplan.com or you can give me a call at 814-580-9881. I hope you guys have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>